I started doing a code review and I literally could not get past the first file without rewriting all of it. Let me show you why. Try and find the entry point, shoot a game entry. Um, and we'll see, yeah, this is the main, this is the main function. Cool. We'll see how this, how this project is put together. Let's get into this. So, <laughs> well, so much stuff to say already. So it main, all right. Entry points. Usually the entry point that we would prefer to use on Windows is win main. That is like the Windows entry point. However, I wanna point out that here, surprisingly, somewhat surprisingly, it doesn't matter. The reason why it doesn't matter is because this is not a Windows app. I literally mean if we go into over here and linker and system, then you can see the subsystem over here is set to console. It's not set to Windows. The reason why is because this, it doesn't have a window. It's not a traditional Windows app that is actually running like in a Windows window. This is a console app. This is a, a terminal application. So I'm probably gonna let that slide because I don't know, like if you did set the subsystem to Windows, for example, and then you used WinMain, you could allocate a console. So you could still spawn a console and do everything you wanted to do, but I don't think there would be a reason to do that. So this is fine. Pause. Is pause a thing on Linux? I don't know if pause is a thing in the Linux terminal. I actually don't know if pause is meant to be used on Linux or just Windows because it's platform specific. But anyway, it's, it's surprising because I don't think this apparently works on Linux. This, this doesn't look like a Windows specific file or anything like that. So it's a little bit strange. But yeah, the, the other thing that jumps out at me is, is system pause. Um, you know, I wouldn't do that. I'd do something like sdcn.get if you really wanted to, uh, you know, just not close the console, for example, just because that that is portable, that's fine across platforms. From being really nitpicky, return zero, not technically necessary, because in the main function, even though it returns an int, you don't have to return anything. The first real line of code, let's skip all of that other crap. The first real line of code is shooter game, game equals new shooter game. All right, so immediately an object oriented approach, and we go ahead, we create a new instance of this class uh, using just the standard heap allocation, C++ new keyword way of making objects, I guess. Uh, and then we start the game, we hit clean at the end. I'm assuming this is what runs the game as well, meaning that we'll be inside this start game function until it terminates, at which point clean will probably be called. We'll delete the game oh, and we'll call system pause and return zero. All right. So much to unpack here. First of all, clean and delete. This is almost a little bit redundant if we're just talking about code. The reason why is because, and so is like start game in a way, right? Because what could happen is you could just have the constructor start the game and the destructor call clean. I haven't looked at this. Okay, this is literally up here. Shoot a game. Shoot a game because you shoot a game. And then this is the whole class. Okay, so you can see here that we have a destructor. It's empty. We have clean, it calls engine.clean, and we have start game. Okay, and start game just does this. There is no constructor here. There's a destructor that's empty. Let's talk about that really quickly. If you have a destructor that's empty, first of all, it doesn't need to exist. But if at the very least you want to enforce an empty destructor, so kind of like you're just making sure that you have an empty destructor, which again, in this context doesn't make much sense. I'd probably remove it entirely. I would write something like this. So this is like the preferred way of doing things. You're basically just saying that I would like a default destructor to be provided. It's gonna be the same as this in this case. I guess it's a little bit cleaner and you're also stating your intention that it is empty. So that's why I like it a bit more. But as I mentioned, you don't need this here. Speaking of you not needing this here though, delete and game.clean. I want you right now to realize that delete, the delete keyword is itself a function call. It's not just literally like, well, it is literally an operator called delete, which will free memory. We know that and we can actually override it and make it do anything we want. But it's also a function that specifically calls the destructor function. So basically what I'm saying is this comes with a, like a, like almost a free function call, not free in terms of performance free, but free because it's still a function call. Although I guess if you had nothing in it, it wouldn't do anything. But anyway, I just mean in terms of when you're reading your own code, it it is like a free function call, which means that when you've got this, it's almost a little bit redundant because you're calling a function here, the destructor, which is doing nothing in this case. And then you're calling clean here, which is your intended functionality for when you do want to delete game and clean everything. So what I'm saying is, I'd probably just put this in the destructor and get rid of this function entirely because it means that you don't need this and it's a little bit cleaner. Same with start game. If you're very intent on using objects here as you seem to be because I'd probably 
not use a class for this and we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, if you're intent on using objects, you might as well like exploit almost the benefits of object-oriented programming, which is the fact that again, you get that destructor and you get that constructor. So we can come over here and we can make a constructor that is our default constructor over here. And we can just do whatever you do in start game like that here. So now you don't need a start game function either, right? This is gone. So we're actually just removing code here basically. And then the final thing is you had engine, like, you know, we have engine over here, right in the middle of functions, which makes it super hard to read. I actually didn't realize immediately that this is a member variable. I thought that this was actually part of a function or something because it's very strange to see like member variables in the middle of functions like that. So this should be somewhere else. Now in this case, it's only a, it's a variable that's only accessed within this class. So we should prefer to restrict its visibility by marking it as private so that we, it's basically preventing unintentional access from outside of this class. My code would look something a little bit probably more like this. Start game, as I mentioned, you don't need. I mean, if we're really going down the path of my code, this is a private variable, so I would mark it with an M underscore, uh, and we end up with something like this. So we're actually rewriting code here in this code review. Again, this, I, I wanna point out, I, I forgot to add this disclaimer at the beginning of this video. These code review videos, are entirely my opinion. They're entirely subjective. Some things are flat out wrong and I will point that out, but this is just organization. This is just me showing how I would better, in my opinion better, organize this existing code. This is where we're at right now. The next step that I don't like is this. This whole shoot a game game and then having to call delete manually like this. Because what that's kind of creating here is a heap allocation and also manual memory management. In general, in C++, if you can avoid using new and delete, you generally should. The problem here, because I actually don't mind, don't tell the C++ community, but I actually don't mind new and delete that much. I don't prefer it, but I, I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. But my real issue with this is not the new and delete. It's more the heap allocation versus the stack allocation. What we can do instead is we can get rid of this being a pointer, we can get rid of new, and we can get rid of this delete and just make this a simple stack allocated object. This is all we need. There's no reason, there's no benefit, there's nothing to really warrant us actually creating this object on the heap like this and then having to manually delete it. If there was, if you still wanted to have it on the heap, obviously you could just wrap it in a unique pointer. So that would look something like this and then we wouldn't need that either. That's if we really wanted it to be on the heap because basically what that does is in the constructor of unique pointer, we'll call new in the destructor, uh, which will happen at the end of the scope, it will call delete. So we're automating that without actually having to write the code, if that makes sense. But in this case, in this case, this is really all we need. Now, those of you paying attention may have noticed that there's one crucial difference between the code that I had before or the code that this person had before, which was the delete game, and then the code that I've changed it to. The crucial difference is the destructor, which calls M engine clean, used to run on this line of code. Now it runs at the end of the scope. If this is a problem, which I suspect it is not, in fact, it's not a problem because you technically don't even need this. Again, don't tell the C++ community, but if you're terminating your application, you don't need to clean anything unless you're actually running code that saves state out or doing something like this because the operating system will obviously reclaim every all the memory that you allocated during the runtime of your application. So honestly, you don't need to do it, but anyway, Let's just suppose we, we wanted to do it. If we still wanted it to happen at this line of code, you got two options that I would possibly do. I'd either actually bring back the clean if you really wanted to be specific and you wanted it to be really clear that you're cleaning the game here, or if you want it to be a bit, be a bit more C++, -I, -I, uh, you know, object oriented, whatever, use the stack more, you could also do something like this, which looks a little bit weird, but you're just creating a scope for game here and it will run entirely in here. Now, when we boil down to this level, you have to ask yourself why. Why is this a class? Now with a class, you are getting this functionality where in the constructor, you know, you're calling this code, in the destructor, you're calling this code. But we're getting to the point here where it's a little bit like, well, why does this class even have to exist? Why don't we just make a function called something like run game and then run game will basically create our engine instance just like this class does. It will call this to start the game and push back a new shooter scene. And then finally, it'll call Call clean to clean and that's it and so now it's it's like we actually get the same code here we get run game but we just don't need a class for it this is what we end up with 
And of course you could also say, well, whatever, we don't need a function for it. Let me just do it directly in main. That's fine if you want to do that as well. If you just want it to be a little bit more descriptive, maybe run game, you know, we can make a function for it. Sure, it doesn't matter. And I, in this case, I'd probably mark it as static because I want it to be internal to this file. But that's probably something that I would end up with instead, instead of using a class. And I think that's a really big thing in C++. If you're coming from a language like Java, for example, everything in Java has to be a class. I mean, even the main function, public static void main string args, that function, that's even inside a class. Everything in Java is inside a class. So naturally, if you're used to a language like that, you might come into C++ and think, yeah, I need a class just like we had before. But I really think that a really, really, really important thing for new C++ programmers, for C++ programmers in general, is just to really get it into your head and embrace the fact that you do not need classes for everything. You do not need object-oriented programming for everything. A lot of the times, just writing a simple function that does your task, that does what you need to do, is just cleaner, better, in every way. So this is probably what I would rewrite this shooter game entry file to look like. I, again, I'd get rid of this and you don't need to return zero. You could, you could even end up just like with this and that's probably okay. All right, and then if we hit F5 to just make sure this all works the same way that it did before, then we can see that the game is running as expected. Okay, so a few things that I'm interested in here. Uh, engine, this seems to be kind of like, uh, you know, a, a singleton in a way that we create that represents, I guess, the entire engine state for this particular instance. Uh, it's stack created, uh, which is interesting because the previous class that we had here was not. Um, and then we can see basically that just from just from reading the, the API usage here, and this is something that I like to do when I'm trying to test code for, we'll say quality. Actually, I think a better word is clarity rather than quality. When I'm trying to just get a feel for the code and try and more or less, you know, objectively be like, is this, is this well written? Is this clear? Have I used good variable names? Have I used good function name? Whatever it might be. I always like to look at it from this side, obviously from the calling side and be like, does this make sense? What do I think of this? And so you can see here that we're creating an engine. We're pushing back a scene, but it's a bit weird because we're not actually running a function called something like add scene, engine dot add scene. That would make more sense to me. If this was something like add scene, engine dot add scene. And then that, then we're starting the game which presumably is running it. So that's another thing that's not clear to me. Start game to me seems like a self-contained kind of immediately terminated function. What that means, immediately terminated might not make sense. But what I, what I mean by that is when I call start game, I expect to return very quickly, right? I don't expect to hang in this function so for this to be basically a blocking function for the entire duration of game, I would instead expect something like engine.run or engine.run game or something. That's the function with that loop, the while running loop and everything. Start game to me seems like a fairly, in a way, atomic operation. Not literally atomic, like a CPU atomic instruction or anything, but atomic in the sense that it should just do the one thing, it should just kick off the game, start the game, do whatever loading it might need to do for that. And then we're back, we're back here and we have to call something like run game. So I'd probably introduce something like this just to make that a bit cleaner. And again, change this to something like add scene. You know, this, is optional and you could even combine it maybe start and run game that would even make more sense i think in my opinion but add scene is a really critical thing that i want you guys to think about um and there's also this which i'm not a huge fan of we'll get to that in a minute we're still on this bloody first file so these are the two options why would i prefer add scene over what we had before the reason why is because this technically requires that the caller be aware of the underlying data structure that is being used to manage scenes. Scenes here is a vector. So what I have to do is if I'm trying to add a scene into this game, I have to go in, I have to see that, oh, there's a data structure called scenes. Okay, it's a vector and it's got a scene pointer. This is a nightmare. This is like so much to dissect here already because Whenever I see pointers, by the way, inside vectors, inside anywhere really, the first question on my mind, what should be the first question on every C++ programmer's mind is what, what are the ownership semantics? If I pass in a pointer, which is just, just a, an address in memory, am I responsible for then freeing that memory? 
Do, do you own it now? Do, are you gonna free that memory? What happens if I want multiple things to have it? What if I wanna share it with someone else and I don't know who's gonna finish using it first? All of these questions immediately circulate whenever I see pointers. But getting past that, getting past the, the pointer situation, you know, do I use in place back? Do I, where do I, like, it's it's weird. I mean, I you know, realistically, I could even just clear all the scenes here. I could do weird stuff with it. It's not clear to me as like the user of this, let's just say, as the user of this API, what the intended behavior is. I mean, I can certainly guess that it's gonna be something like push back or in place back because I'm trying to get my scenes into this vector. That makes sense. But you can see that by having something like add scene, I'm removing the need for the caller to be aware of the data structure. And also what happens if this, you wanna change this from like, a vector to a map. Maybe you introduce scene IDs and now it makes more sense for, for them to be kind of indexed by their ID, by their globally unique identifier. In that case, what's gonna happen with this code, it'll almost certainly have to have to change into this add scene function anyway. So all I'm doing by introducing add scene is I'm just removing that burden on the caller to be aware of and know the, the underlying implementation detail, which is the data structure that is used internally by this engine to manage scenes. Okay, and then yes, there's the whole new shooter scene situation, which is a pointer. I don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> I'll talk about it in a dedicated video in the future probably. If people wanna see it, leave a comment below if you're interested in what I mean by all of that, because that is a wild ride.